I'm Char and I like splashing about in video games. Today I'm looking at Stranded, a self-described walking simulator about crash landing on an alien world. As with all my videos there will be spoilers. Stranded takes about half an hour to play through and if it sounds like your sort of thing you'd be much better off doing that first. A bit of context on how I approach this one. Outer Space is basically a video game cliché. But there aren't too many games about space that focus heavily on concepts like loneliness or isolation. And they're some of the things I find interesting about space. The potential for disempowerment and small stories set against vast backdrops. This is one of those topics where it would probably be easier to talk about movies or books, but there are some relevant games that stand out for me. Firstly, Mirror Moon EP, which is fairly abstract and contemplative. There is a strong focus on navigation, both across galaxies and trying to make sense of individual planets. A lot of time is spent traversing barren landscapes, or waiting for your ship to slowly travel to the next system, and it can seem impenetrable and easy to lose your way. I spent most of my time sure I would be aimlessly exploring forever and never make any tangible progress. There are traces of life in the remains of built structures and in the names given to planets by other players who discovered them before you, but you don't meet other life forms directly. Few games have been willing to let me feel so lost and alone. Then there's The Swapper, which is very dark, literally and otherwise, and emphasises the emptiness and unknowableness of space. This kind of mix of science fiction and horror is probably the most common setup for space games that emphasise loneliness and isolation, so I'm sure you have your own examples. Possibly with that theme of science or human exploration going too far in some way and uncovering things we were never meant to see or know. And finally, Waking Mars, which is a lot more peaceful and lets you grow Martian gardens. Here you are more personally powerful than in my previous examples, but it's still easy to feel small and get a sense of awe at the environments and ecology you encounter. There's danger, but it also seems like Liang appreciates the peace of being on his own and exploring these beautiful cave systems. Turning off the robot's chatter and getting out of constant radio contact is a relief. The environments and the playable character are best experienced through isolation. They are beautiful and strange. So, back to Stranded, which at least in my head fits with this loose collection of lonely space games. Stranded begins in the crashed ship, with the readout showing damaged engines. It has a familiar clean and modern science fiction look, with a lot of white and reflective floor. Stranded draws on some level of prior familiarity with science fiction. No one needs to explain what cryosequence active means, and it would be tedious if it did. The pilot is still in the stasis pod. When you open the doors, they swoosh open with a science fiction-y door sound, and she steps out. The player character gasps audibly, and her whole upper body moves with every breath, as though she's struggling to take in enough air. There are two exits from the ship. The right hand door seems closer and tempts you to choose it first. It leads to a dead end, but it's a great first glimpse of the planet. The rocky red landscape conjures popular images of Mars, despite overlooking a blue liquid lake with clouds rolling by in the background. It's as stunning as anything in Waking Mars, and in both cases the environment dwarfs our character in comparison. But it's more overwhelming here because we're powerless to affect anything. The game is like stripped back point and click adventure, which makes it tempting to keep clicking around the screen looking for things to interact with. But there's nothing to do here but appreciate the view. This contributes to a sense of disempowerment, but also wonder thanks to this beautiful pixel art. Through the ship's other door, we can see how serious the damage is. I don't think we're going anywhere. Something just moved off to the left, but it wasn't clear. So it's very tempting to follow it. 
On the next screen there's a slightly better glimpse of the creature. Each step the player character takes feels solid, with obvious crunchy regular footsteps. But we are required to wait for her to reach the other side of the screen, there's no way to fast forward it. There's time to properly take in the rocky formations and dead looking plant life in the foreground. There are a couple of those rocky, golem or robot-like creatures hanging out inside. There's some love for Shadow of the Colossus on display here, though only in a really superficial way. The life forms seem peaceful enough and also appear to be breathing heavily. But there's no way to interact, no dialogue or any other way to understand who they are or if they're even fully aware of us. Some kind of shrine or temple with alien letters on the outside. Again, thinking like an adventure gamer, feels like a code, something to solve. But this isn't Fez and we don't get to understand. I think a lot of the hatred levelled at walking simulators, for want of a better term, comes from the difference between what your previous experience tells you about what to expect to be able to do in a system, and how that particular system actually behaves. Stranded makes use of those subverted expectations to reinforce feelings of disempowerment. Stranded is structured around a day-night cycle, and day one is mostly for getting your bearings. It's possible to keep exploring and find a cave and other shrines, but everything is empty and quiet. With no other option, we return to our crashed ship to sleep until nightfall. You can bring up a minimap of places you've been, but it's not really a complex enough place for this to be useful. Like being equipped for a different sort of adventure, but instead we're stuck here. We aren't lost amongst an expansive map like in Mirror Moon EP, we're stuck in a small area with no escape. Sleep always brings up the game's title screen again, like a reminder of our predicament, spelled out in thin but imposing science fiction-y capital letters with a dramatic building sound. Night transforms the landscape into deep purples with stars glinting overhead. At night is when the planet starts to come alive. The rock creatures are moving about outside instead of hiding away in their shrine, although there's still no way to communicate with them. Further along, the vegetation has started glowing, clearly not dead after all. The caves are also pulsing with lights, maybe from bioluminescent fungi. We can still visit the shrines, and this time they light up at our presence, though it's difficult to know exactly what we've triggered. Something's happening in the larger shrine. With all three shrines lit, it starts to pulse in blue, red and green. But we can't get in to see, it's blocked off by the body of a fallen creature. I wonder what happened. Interestingly, our map goes fuzzy near the main shrine suffering from some kind of interference. This gating forces us to consider the mystery before we're really in any position to solve it, and there's plenty of time to think about it while wandering around and to focus on how isolated and alone we are. Back to bed then. The ship and our portable minimap are the only things we're able to properly interact with. The rest of the world might react to our presence, but there's nothing we can do about it one way or the other except move through the environment. There's nothing to fight, no problems we can solve, and no one to talk to. There's a gradually building despair rather than the sharp horror of something like the Swapper. On day two the planet is quieter again, seeming even more deserted than the previous day. Our ship is in trouble, suffering other system failures, and the oxygen is almost gone.
Outside, one of the rock creatures slowly lowers itself into the lake and expires with a growling sound of despair. Possibly they feel as trapped as I am. I'm running out of time. That night, the ship finally loses power and shuts down. Now one of the creatures waits for me to catch up, like it wants me to follow it. Like the previous night, I proceed to light the three shrines. Green like the colossus creatures I've seen on this planet. Blue like a giant head from Prometheus. The spiky a red shrine, which feels familiar but I'm not quite placing it. This time there's nothing to block our way to the final area where we face three giant colossi, now lit with the colours of the three other shrines. Eventually the three coloured lights merge into one. and transform the player character. There was no escaping from this place short of becoming part of it, or choosing death as the Colossus at the lake did. Do you want to start over? There's the temptation of replayability to be in control and find a different outcome, but it doesn't exist. <laughs>